page 40. At the midpoint of all earthly occurrences stands the human being with the globally most highly evolved spirit form. He has to regulate and to evaluate all things of this world according to the all unified law of creational regulation recognizable in all earthly laws of nature. As an individual being, the human being has various tasks which are incumbent upon him or her. Firstly, he or she is obligated to the task of maintaining their life for the duration of their developmental time given to them. And secondly, he or she has to heed the fulfillment of their duty to further develop him or herself spiritually and in a consciousness-based manner, to the best possible extent, to acknowledge the spiritual evolution as an important truth. As a community being, the task is incumbent upon him or her to preserve their species and to teach and to educate their offspring in the sense of the spiritual teaching. Furthermore, however, the duty is imposed upon him or her to integrate and to adapt him or herself into a natural communal regulation which guarantees just as much a natural evolution in every respect as the nature visibly exemplifies this. The preservation of the human species does not lie in the formula of simple multiplication as this is proclaimed by the irrational teachings of earthly religions. The preservation of the species lies in the following of the natural laws. So it is a following in venerableness, overseeing and thus controlled. The formula of the simple multiplying, however, is unvenerable, unmanageable, and uncontrolled because it creates proliferation in senseless masses and against all laws of nature. And that the human and that the earth human being follows the formula of the simple multiplying and disregards all creational natural laws is recognizable for every human being who moves even only in small paths of consciousness-based evolution. Excessively and unrestrainedly the humankind reproduces and procreates descendants in uncontrollable, unvenerable form. Since your Earth is able to sustain and to feed 500 million human life forms, the Earth human being, however, procreated approximately 3.5 thousand million, or 2004, 7.5 thousand million, or in 2020, 9 thousand million human beings, and thus in only a few hundred years drove an evil overpopulation to such an extent that millions must die of an abnormal death. Through the irrationality and religious irrational teachings of the earth human beings, the masses of the humankind were driven boundlessly, whereby the problems restricted to and containable within a small humankind spread out to a nameless mass and became uncontrollable. Thus with the breaking and contempt of the law of the preservation of species, in only a few hundred years the humankind was driven to a mass of the overpopulation, and inevitably all problems, hardships, and Aussartungen increased with it. If the human beings live in the fulfillment of their task in the right sense, then they live in the brazen regulation given by the creation. But since they disregard this regulation and withdraw from it, they have to taste and to bear the consequences. The earth human being, however, has trampled underfoot this regulation and grossly disregarded it, and now they have to bear the consequences of it. As one of the most important tasks of the material life sphere of the earthly humankind, it is to be heeded that the overpopulation is curbed in strongest measure and that the number of the human Wesenheiten finds its state in the normal 500 million norm. The reality permits only this number of earthly human life forms, so this value must be restored. The treading of this way is not simple and not easy because, first, 
intellect, and rationality must prevail in order to recognize the destination of the fulfillment. This way, the way to this destination, however, is this. All those who look after the situation of Earth, those responsible, have to enact a rule and be concerned about its success that no family conceives more than three descendants spread over a ten-year duration. No male human life form shall procreate offspring under thirty years of life, likewise not over forty years of life. As the first recommendation, however, it shall be in effect that in excessively overpopulated states an absolute regulation for a birth stop is enacted for the duration of seven years through which the number of inhabitants depletes in natural compliance. The number of inhabitants bearable for the earth may be calculated according to the square kilometer of fertile land. This also applies to each individual country, each individual state. The truth of the natural law for the nourishment and preservation of the life is that for each square kilometer of fertile land only 12 human life forms may be calculated. A square kilometer of fertile land is able to feed 12 human life forms without worries along with all animals given in the outdoor nature and the animals for human needs without the human being quote having to bring quote regulation with their quote regulating sense of disorder into the wildlife of the nature and into the actual natural regulation. All famines become resolved and various illnesses are nipped in the bud when this law is followed and observed. Through this, however, your problems of the environmental and air pollution also become solved along with many other problems associated with it. Wars and other similar outrages become reduced in the greatest measures and the earth human being learns again that to him or her his or her next one is, in truth, his or her next one, and that the human beings amongst each other are reliant on each other. The love and harmony will again attain its validity, and peace will return to the earth. Therefore, it is the first recommendation of the hour, and of all time, that the human population be kept to a normalized mass, and be reduced back to it, because the most unsolvable problems rest in the earthly overpopulation of the human life form. The way to the destination is long and hard, and first, the rationality must prevail in the earth human beings. But the way mentioned is, in truth, the only one which leads to the destination, because there is no second way, and also no way of the compromise. The earth human beings must therefore take care that they tread the way mentioned, and lead themselves and the earth back to the natural normality. Amongst the earth human beings, there is no equality, but rather only disparity everywhere. From human being to human being, this disparity is to be taken into account, which splits and separates them amongst each other. The mightful ones rule over the weak and threaten them in their existence. The mighty ones do not exercise their might in natural regulation, which says that the strong ones govern the weak ones in an instructing manner and protect them from hardship and terrible things, as this can be seen in the outdoor nature. In the nature, the equality of every life form necessitates the right of the stronger ones which govern, teach, and protect. With the human beings, however, the disparity is accommodated, and the craftiness and cunningness with which the weaker ones are suppressed and exploited. The ones inferior to the stronger ones, however, cloak themselves in a garment of the submissiveness, of the bondage and the devotion, and thereby lose any initiative to rebel against unfairness and the imperiousness of the stronger ones, while the stronger ones immerse themselves even more into their position of might. From these different predispositions, the human leadership and the crass inequality amongst the human beings grow. Enslavement and exploitation become a farce and the consciousness-based subjuga subjugation is inevitable, especially when suppressive and unreal religions with deplorable and absurd dogmas are even interwoven into the forming of might. The weaker ones are thereby no longer naturally subordinated simply to a guidance, but rather subjugated, exploited, and eliminated. 
The laws of nature, however, teach that the weak are subordinated to the strong and follow the strong and talented ones, equipped with certain capabilities. The stronger ones are thus automatically, in accordance with natural regulation, granted the right to lead the less capable, to pave the way for them in every respect, to instruct and to protect them. This is the law of the nature, given from the creation, as a brazen regulation. A law that not only has its validity on your earth, but finds its right in the entire universe. The brazen regulation, the laws and recommendations of the creation, has its validity everywhere, in the expanses of space and time, as well as in the spaceless and timeless, and in the creation itself. If, however, the creation itself directs itself according to its own laws and recommendations, and thereby justifies the brazen regulation within itself, then the human life form created by the creation also has to direct itself accordingly and follow and keep to the guidelines. Since time immemorial, human beings who have been struck with consciousness-based blindness wandered over the earth and proclaimed evil irrational teachings. This was also the case at the time of the French Revolution, when evil irrational teachers and material intellectual human beings, poor in a consciousness-based manner, came before the masses of the people and shouted out into the world that everything which carries a human face is equal. With this evil lie, they referred specifically to the ones who were still underage in a consciousness-based manner, to the subjugated, to the underdeveloped, and the consciousness enslaved. The conscious lies and the unfulfillable promises of the irrational teachers were able to break through the lowest drives in these pure and simple human beings who were influenced in this manner. Lies and unfulfillable promises of the imaginary determination to finally shake off the heavy yoke of the oppressors and to take all things into their own hands themselves misled these weaker ones and the ones needing guidance to erroneous actions and to riots which got very badly out of control of the good human nature. They certainly did not know that the equality of the human beings justifies its entitlement only in the following of the laws of nature and in the truth of the evolution of the consciousness and spirit. But the masses of people listened to the mad cry of the equally mad material intellectuals who, however, were fundamentally not the actual ones responsible for these irrational teachings, which did not even need 200 years of the development to put the entire earth in turmoil, horror and disunity, misery and hardship. The fundamental facts of these evil actualities go back further than the irrational teachings presented at the time by the material intellectuals who were poor in a consciousness-based manner. The facts lead back to the beginnings of the earthly religions, which had put in their irrational teachings a determining, punishing, watching, and all-seeing being in the absolute, above the earth human beings, thereby forcing them into submissiveness, enslaving them under a higher being, and taking away from them their original self-determination and self-assurance. Through this, the autonomous consciousness-based evolution was prohibited, because where a higher form of being exercises might, or gewalt, determination, judgment, and all their characteristics associated with might, all self-determination and self-assurance have to be suppressed, enslaved, and destroyed. Gewalt is the brutal execution of elemental might and force, but it is far above all might and all force. The pro proclaimers and bringers of these irrational teachings, however, did the rest and chose themselves as representatives of their invented higher and all-pervasive ruling life form. In this position, they seized the guidance of entire peoples, enslaved them, and exploited them. High in the knowledge, they rose up to become kings of wisdom and certain proclaimers and heralds who proclaimed to the earth human beings their all-encompassing might and their will. New religions were proclaimed and written and established with human blood, and the leaders of the people became dependent upon these unreal religions. Inevitably, they reached out their hands to the heads of the religion and worked together with them because only in this manner were they able to maintain their positions. 
And since then, religious leaders and leaders of the people work together hand in hand on your earth and proclaim the state's welfare and the kingdom of heaven in one breath. But it was not until the French Revolution that this broke through so vehemently that the outcoming effects led to catastrophe in less than 200 years. The strata leading at the time and in the following years which led to the led the prosperity and adversity and the entire fate of the earthly humankind are to be named as the actual culprits who have released a very harsh and bitter medicine over the earth humankind. In the ur times of earthly humankind the earth still basked purely in peace and love because the leaders and guiders of the peoples were ones who were knowing and wise in the teaching of the spiritual and consciousness-based evolution. But they were pursued by the religion bringers and irrational teachers of all shades who brought discord and irrational dogmas amongst the human beings. The discord, however, also penetrated into the leading circles of the humankind and sowed hatred, disfavor, death, and ruin. The mightful ones of your earth came into conflict with the mighty ones of the religions and, in order to be able to subsist, they made compromises and oaths among themselves. But they were constantly concerned to secure for themselves better advantages and, if possible, to eliminate the allies. The mistrust stirred up in this manner and the endlessly grown hatred ultimately led to the unification in the evil and good between countries and religions. Working hand in hand, they now subjugated the masses of the people together, however, each side was well concerned about their own advantage. Well united in the leadership, there prevailed discord, pretense, and unhonesty amongst them, which inevitably had to lead to the chaos without rescue. And this has remained so up to the present time, because you, earth human beings, are hurrying towards an evil catastrophe of unprecedented magnitude and which you are only able to prevent if you get hold of your rationality and consciously and diligently and in following of the spiritual teaching avert the terrible things otherwise woe to the earthly humankind because it is on the best way to destroy itself up to the last vazen entity on the one side of your humankind stands the worldly leading powers of all possible shades. Scientists, financial magnates, politicians, military personnel, economists, anarchists, and malicious revolutionaries and do-gooders in the most terrible sense. On the other side, strong and mightful religions spread themselves, religious dignitaries, sectarians, and the misguided ones who have fallen prey to the hard fanaticism. This represents a world leadership of the most unreal form, whose fundamental origin for today's sort is to be sought in the French Revolution. The worldly mites at that time gained their uppermost leadership in the first pseudo-leaders of the peoples, while the religious powers reveal, revealed themselves in the religious leaders and their dignitaries. The enormous struggle for might that resulted from it stretched like a red band through all the past hundreds of years, demanding innocent blood and inciting hatred, discord, disfavor, and mistrust in unprecedented proportions. Even the doubtfulness and splitting within the individual religions themselves demanded human blood, hatred, enmity, and endless streams of tears to an extent which can never be brought into consonance with the creational teaching, the laws and recommendations of love and oneness, and consciousness-based further development. All laws and recommendations and the brazen creational regulation were disregarded, trampled, and destroyed in these struggles for might, and the mightful ones of the earth chose themselves to be the creation itself, or its substitution. But what are the actual reasons for these malicious derailments against nature. In this regard, only the realization known since time immemorial is to be made that the leaders of your world were no longer conscious of their true laws and recommendations given by the creation and the tasks connected with them 
because in their whipped up megalomania they chose themselves to be the creation itself and seized its leading position. Consciously evolving towards the imperiousness, they pushed away with Gewalt everything that was creational and thus a foreign origin to them. Very quickly they became obsessed with the megalomania of the imperiousness and buried and forgot the existence of the creation as well as its laws and recommendations. The obligation to be bearers and teachers of the spiritual teaching and to place the weaker ones under their protection was lost to them. A mutual cooperation between the individual leaders became illusory because each one was only concerned with their own might and their own horrendous profit. Instead of the cooperation and the naturally stipulated leadership in the creational law, there is unfortunately another fact to be noted, namely, that in the course of the last hundreds of years, the cleft between the leaders of your humankind and between human beings and human being has continuously widened and became ever more unbridgeable. The influence on the individual human being from the religious, political, and economic side is increasingly growing out of hand and is already affecting them in the most secret private sphere. Certainly individual human beings or small groups of do-gooders have emerged over the course of the time, but they were decreed and met with disapproval or even with open conflict. Their ideas and advocacies, however, were without exception originated from religious irrational teachings or from fully unlogical worldly views. Only very few have recognized the sense of the creational truth and fought the juggernaut of insanity with the human beings. They, however, were all killed, beaten, persecuted, and murdered because without exception they spoke in harsh, bitter, and merciless tongues in the language which the human beings had to understand. And truly the truth sounds bitter, harsh, and merciless and for earthly human beings, it can only be spoken in very harsh words if it must be spread by human beings of your consciousness-based level. Truly, the truth thereby sounds very harsh, and it is a deadly, insulting medicine for all those human beings who believe that they are better than the harsh language which is spoken to them. For the earth human being, however, it can be said that only the harsh words are able to explain the truth as it really is. Evil Ausartungen cannot be explained and paraphrased with mild words because they would do evil demolition to the truth and, moreover, falsify this truth once again, as this was already the case since former times. Heed, therefore, the truth proclaimer and the wise ones of your time who proclaim the knowledge, the truth, and the wisdom in harsh words and spread the immense spiritual teaching amongst you. These truth proclaimers are still rare amongst your life form, and you can count on them on half a hand.